everyone, welcome to Connected. Ours is the age of the coach. The 21st century service marketplace includes career coaches for the office, relationship coaches for home, running coaches for the weekends camper through the park. So it is no surprise we are engaging them in growing numbers for an act as old as time, giving birth. Today, there are six times more doulas coaching women through labor than there were in 2002, according to DONA International, the oldest and largest doula certifying organization in the world. But what is a doula? What do they do exactly? To talk about this, I invited Brenda Anleo, who is going to connect with us from Finland. Before we connect with Brenda, let's meet her. Brenda Angleo is a medicine woman from Mexico who resides in Finland. She grew up in a naturopathic family and from a very young age learned from her father the ways to heal the body through the contact with the elements in the earth, water, fire, earth, wind, diet and herbs, and from her mother the healing through energy and the connection with the sun and the moon. She has been spreading her knowledge about female wisdom and sacred feminine energy and also about ancestral Mexican wisdom in Finland, Sweden and Mexico for the last five years and online around the world. She started to work with traditional natural medicines and energy about 20 years ago, with shamanic practices 15 years ago, in the awakening of female wisdom 6 years ago, and as a professional doula of pregnancy, birth and postpartum 3 years ago. Her work and vision is fully to inspire others to reconnect with the sacred powers of life, and take our responsibility to take care of the cycle of life, death, life, and honor it with respect, love, and humility. It is my pleasure today to introduce Brenda and Leo. It is, I am so happy that we finally made it to this day. We, I waited for so long, actually, not only to meet you, but to talk about this topic that I think it's getting more and more popular every, every day. Um, welcome to Connected, Brenda. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, and thank you for taking the time to talk to us all the way from Finland. Let's go ahead with the first question. Brenda, tell thank us, you. what is a doula? What is it that you guys do? Tell us all about it, please. Okay, thank you, Sudi. <laughs> thank you, and my, my pleasure to be here. And yes, Doula actually is like a woman who is, but well, it can be also a man, but it's a person that is there to support another woman during the transition of pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. And we are there to support the, the other woman and actually the whole family and the baby, so like the mother, the father, the baby, or the mother, the mother, the baby and we are there to teach them many things about the process in during every stage and we are also there to to teach them also like movement exercise with the boys with the water with the balls like we are there to support them and teach them many other things i see and brenda how did you become a doula? How was your journey? How did you identify and identify your call? Well, actually, uh, it was quite a long time ago when I was here in Finland, like eight years ago. But I didn't know that I can be a doula. So actually, I was looking more for the traditional midwifery school, but there was not here. So the only way that I could go to work with pregnancy and birth and postpartum, it was through the doula school. So then in Mexico, I started to study a little bit about doula and then here in Finland. And in Finland, there is schools where you can certificate as doula. And the schools are like between one to three years. So it depends because it's a really long process. So 
I was studying there for maybe two years. Um, after that, I got another different kind of studies that are is is like somatic, somatic way to work as doula. So that's the the second part of my school, and then, well, nowadays I'm here working as doula. I see. And tell me, in order to get into um, to prepare yourself as a doula, uh, do you need to have any um, any knowledge previous? or you can just start from zero, like from just a wanting to do this, to go get certified or do this type of studies? Well, I think that the first thing to become a doula, of course, is the calling to want to help another sisters and another women and other families. But I think the most important thing is to, to heal first ourselves so we can be there to support the family and to support the woman and not to try to save them from their own birth and their own process. Because otherwise, if we are not healing first ourselves and we are not really, then we cannot really be present there to support. And then we can, we, we can like, uh, I don't know how to explain this, but I, I really feel like the first thing to become though life is to heal our story. So we can be like a complete person to support and to be there like as guardians of the bird because that's the most important moment of the dola the, the, the moment when the mother is giving life and the mother like, when the mother is completely opening to give birth to the life in the earth so it's so sacred moment that as dola many of us think that we just need to go to school and learn like in a structural way what you, we should do and what we shouldn't do but the reality is that we have to be like a complete person like more consciousness about the, the sacred moment that I feel like that <laughs> right well it makes total sense actually and then Tell me a little bit, how is your service or your work required? Please describe your work from the moment a client contacts you until the end. How does it work? Well, uh, that depends because I have like different packets and there are like packets that are like really just to work as Tola during the birth. And we have like small meetings before they give birth. And then I have another packet that is like more complete. So I am there the whole pregnancy, like maybe not the whole pregnancy, but maybe the last three months. And then I'm preparing them to to be there in doing the birth, like to face their fears, to be there trusting in their own knowledge, trusting in their own body, trusting in their own wisdom. So during the, the pregnancy, it's all this preparation of letting go the fears, letting go the insecurities. And then when they are ready to give birth, I am there during the whole process of birth. And I'm there like helping the mother to release tension, to release pain, to release sensations, to massage, to talking, to meditation, to singing, to playing with the water, playing with the things that we have there. And then when once the baby is, is it's birth, or when, once the, the birth is ready, then it depends on what the mother wants, but then I can take the placenta with me to make some medicine, and then the baby and the mother and the father or the family, they just stay there and then I'm going. And then I'm coming back in the, in the first day after the birth, during the postpartum period, and then I have some healings, healings like this, closing the bones that we say in Mexico, La Cerrada de Cadera, and during that process, I like really help the mother to come back to her center and also uh, supporting the breastfeeding process. So it's all the, the and then if she needs medicine or she wants the process, I'm, I'm, I'm working with the medicines. And if they want, then we have a still one ceremony more that is the placental, honoring the placental hold process for me like the one that I like and the one that I used to do. I see and then when you talk about all of these processes where does it take place? Can you do this 
while being in a clinic or in a hospital or at home, where does, where does this all take place? Yes, like uh, during the pregnancy, all the meetings that we have uh, before the, the birth, we have them in my own place, like my own place to, to do the exercise and to do the meditations and all that. And I'm all going there to them place, to them houses. And the bird can be also that the bird is a home bird. So I can be there in the home bird at home or I have been also in many different hospitals. So here in Finland actually there is the home birth, hospital birth, and the possibility to have kind of home birth, but you rent a place to keep birth in a place that is really like a house and your own home, but it's not yours. So yes, it depends. And then in postpartum is here in my place that I have the sauna, I have the, the bath, to give the healings and all the things like massage table all this year. All of so your tools. Fantastic. Yes, and also it depends because if it's C section, then I have to go there and then I'm doing the healings and all the pro like breastfeeding concealer and all this. It's normally in them places, in them house. I see. I think this is important to say because lots of people think that if you are you, if you are working with a doula, then you cannot have a doctor or you cannot go to the hospital. Or if you're going to the hospital, you cannot have a doula. And that's not how it works, really, right? There are some people that actually like feel more comfortable and more protected to be with both, or some other people just want right. it. It's just it depends on the person, right? Yes, yes, yes. And it's really nice that we are like so many different kind of dollars. But there are all kind of dollars. So I think dollars nowadays are working like in a really nice way with the midwife. So I used to, to work like in a really easy and flowing way with the midwife. And also it's easier nowadays to go to the hospital and say like I'm dollar. So they will know that you are there to support the mother and the family. Oh, that's great. And then Brenda, going yeah. back a little bit, you were saying that in order to pre be prepared and help the women that is about to give birth, you have to be a person that is um, uh, very conscious and is very well together, let's say. How do you keep yourself like that? What do you do that you maintain yourself um, ready to help another woman? So, yes, I think like really to be the space, the empty space that the family needs. Um, but it's an empty space that is strong and it is in the center also. It's important to learn to let go of our own stuff. If we are stressful or if we have like so many things happening in our life, we have to learn how to put these things outside of the space, how to clean ourselves from these stress from this situation so we can be really completely present there present there and also i feel like many dollars and many 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 midwives are trying to really save the mothers from their own experience and they are trying to protect them like so much that they don't let them like experience their own process so part of this own healing uh, process is so it's really important to be completely there for them. Right. And if we talk about, let's say, tools or practices, what is it that you you do every day to, you know, like you said, to release stress, yes. to not bring your problems to your work? What would you, what is it that you do? Well, I am a person who is working in a very ceremonial way. So meditation and a lot of ceremonies are happening here also in my place. And during these ceremonies, we are doing a lot of uh, healing through the meditation. So it's a lot of meditation, a lot of singing with the drum, a lot of like really writing our own stuff. And of course, doing exercise, 
eating well, like all this is part of everything. Like if we are fine, then we are gonna be there present for them. If we right. are not eating well, if we are not doing, like taking care of us, we, are, we cannot take care of the other. That is true. And also, Brenda, is there any difference between a doula and a midwife? Really? Yes, of course. What is it, please? Yes, yes, yes. Because the, the midwife has, uh, they have been prepared for many years in the most medical way to be there for the mother. And the doula is not the person who is going to give this uh, inform medical information as midwife and it's not going to be there to make the procedures that the midwife is doing. We cannot go there to, to see how many centimeters the, the mother is open or to be there to take the baby. Like it's, these are things that are for the midwife and it's important that Dola Dola knows what is her paper in that place and the wisdom and the knowledge of the midwife. I see. So in a, in a, let's say, in a picture if we imagine, would be a mother, a midwife and a doula. Uh, normally in all the birth that I had been it's being the mother, the father, the midwife, and the doula. Like it's the doula, the mother, the father, and the midwife is coming and going, and it can change if we are in the couple. And in home birth, the midwife is also there the whole time with us. Right, so it is uh, different knowledges put it together in order to make like a beautiful birth, right? Yes, yes, and that's the that's the goal to understand that we are there together. Right, that's important. Let's talk about the the part that is kind of I don't know, not controversial, but you know, several people when they hear about placenta, people get weird because usually we are taught and we see everywhere that you know at hospitals and and clinics. You get a placenta and you throw it away. Normally, that's accepted. Yes. So when we talk to people that, oh, you know what? There are these other people that keep it for later and use it later. So people get absolutely um, curious, some of them, and some others get really, um, you know, like, I don't know, weird out, let's say. So please tell us yeah, yeah. about that. <laughs> How is this about the placenta encapsulation? Why is it good and why people should try to do it? Well, uh, yes, I don't really know when, when this, this part of throwing away the placenta is starting, but the, the placenta nowadays is taking more and more place, fortunately and it's because now the people can really see what are the effects of eating the placenta in the placenta because there are many ways to eat the placenta and just one of them is the capsule encapsulation but there are like chocolate there are oils there are tinctures there is a ceremony to the to honor the placenta like there are many ways that we can connect with the placenta and i feel like the most important thing about the placenta is to understand the physiology of the placenta, not just the, that it's an organ that after the baby is, is birth, that is some extra organ that is just going to the trash. Like the, the, the reality is that that organ was protecting the mother and the baby, and that organ is full of vitamins and minerals and hormones and proteins, and it's so full of nutrients for the mother and for the baby and for the family actually that when in many hospitals they are not throwing away the placenta and they are using the placenta yes, just because in the placenta they can use the when some parts for eyes and some other parts are just selling to make makeup and creams and many other things that nowadays 
are in the market. I feel it's more about the, that there is not still the consciousness about what is the placenta. Yes, the placenta is helping a lot the mother during the postpartum period, especially because all the hormones that go down after the birth can be again a little softer go down by eating the placenta because then they are eating the hormones and the down is not so strong and it's like hormones and nutrients especially and it will it will help also to to for the production of the milk and it will help for the mother to close again the all the bones and all the uterus going back to to the to a smaller size because never will go back to the same size it will go smaller just so the placenta is really 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 like a pure medicine for the mother and also for the baby and it's also using for the skin and it's using for so many things so so many things and uh, how do you actually eat it let's say okay you give birth and you as a doula you collect the placenta and then you do the ritual and then what's next how do you actually get to the point when you're ingesting it uh, well there are many different methods like the first and the easiest way and is the faster way to to gain again these uh, hormones and these nutrients to the mother is immediately after birth and they can take one piece of the placenta immediately after that and put it in some kind of smoothie, for example. So put it with some fruits or something and then drink it. So that's the first and the easiest and the faster. But also then if I'm taking the placenta with me, I can make the capsules. And the capsules are like they can eat daily, at least the first three weeks. And then in the future, they, they can save them for using in different stages of their life. But also there are the chocolates and there are the tinctures. I see. And yes, that that tinctures, capsules and chocolates are the and the smoothies. So these four ways to drink to eat it. And for the most hardcore moms they just chop it up, put it on the smoothie and drink up. Just like that. And the no, no, they can actually, the mothers, they are just taking straight away the piece of the placenta into the mouth and they can hold it there and eat. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, this is, this shakes a little bit what is known, right? Because that's how we said before, like, I've been hearing a lot more about women taking this, this path and saying, you know what, we're going to do it differently. I am going to have an assistance with from a doula and after that I'm actually going to go ahead and um, use the placenta in order to make me stronger and make my baby stronger. Um, Brenda is so much information that you gave us today and I am so happy that you took the time to share with us. I want to thank you and I want to ask you to please share your social media information uh, so people can follow your work. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sweetie. And yes, I am really honoring about talking placenta. I love placentas. I love the wisdom that there is behind the organ because there is so much that our little mind cannot really understand. That is not just the scientific way to see the things. There are like many, many other things behind this. And for me, it's a honor. So thank you very much. And yes, I have my Facebook page. It's Brenda Kistley. And otherwise, there is the other Facebook group, uh, Facebook page, and it's Holistic Ancestral and Sacred Healing Exchange. It's quite long name, but it's there. And thank you so much for you. And I'm just wishing that more and more people awake and take their, their inner power to say yes to the placenta, to the dollars, and to the more natural ways to keep it. Me too. Thank you, Brenda. A big kiss Thank all the you. way to Finland. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's going back. Bye-bye. <laughs> there is a reason why old habits and way to do things tend to come back. Back in the days, families were closer. Mothers and grandmothers spent time together. Priceless time where they could share experiences, help each other and learn from one another. If you're planning to get pregnant or know about somebody that will and needs some quality support, 
find a dola and make your experience one of a kind. To connect with me, send me an email or a private message on my Facebook page. Stay connected and until next time with me, bye-bye!